This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Today, India and China's rivalry is at the forefront of the Maldives election. The US and Vietnam upgrade their ties, the aftermath of Morocco's devastating earthquake, Romania's bear problem, and the UK arrests an alleged spy for China working in Parliament. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Monday the 11th of September 2023. The India-China rivalry is an incredibly significant geopolitical dynamic. The two nations of over 1.4 billion people each share a disputed border prone to flare-ups and vie for influence on the global stage. This rivalry is currently playing out in the Maldives, a relatively tiny island nation southwest of India, best known for its beautiful islands, beaches and waters. On Saturday, the Maldives held the first round of its presidential election, which has been described as a virtual referendum on Indian or Chinese influence. Both India and China have poured hundreds of millions of dollars into infrastructure projects in the country. The main opposition candidate, Mohamed Mizu, from the Progressive Party of Maldives, emerged in first place with 46% of the vote. He's seen as the more pro-China candidate, Meanwhile, incumbent President Ibrahim Soli, who has brought about closer ties with India, came in second with around 39%. As neither got more than 50%, the pair will go to a runoff vote on September the 30th. President Soli has pushed an India-first policy since taking office in 2018, meaning he's prioritised the relationship with nearby India, which has a small military presence in the Maldives. However, his critics say he has allowed India's influence to go unchecked, and opposition candidate Mizu has promised to remove all Indian troops stationed in the country, with his coalition spearheading an India Out campaign during the election. Mizu has the backing of former President Abdullah Yameen, who, during his 2013-2018 term, sought closer ties to China and brought the Maldives into China's Belt and Road Initiative. The Supreme Court blocked Yameen from standing in this year's election because of his conviction for corruption and money laundering, so Mohamed Mizu became something of a last-minute candidate, making his first-placed result against the incumbent president something of a surprise. President Soli was damaged by the fact that a breakaway group from his party fielded their own presidential candidate, who ended up securing 7% of the vote. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Yesterday, US President Joe Biden signed a comprehensive strategic partnership with Vietnam after attending the G20 summit. In total, this means that the US has been raised two levels to the top status in Vietnam's bilateral ties hierarchy. For their part, Vietnam has avoided making this change in the past out of fear of upsetting China. Speaking about the change though, Nguyen Phu Trong, the General Secretary of the Vietnamese Communist Party, said that the partnership with the US had grown leaps and bounds. Additionally, John Finer, a Deputy US National Security Advisor, said that the step is more than words, and that in a system like Vietnam, this is a signal to their entire government, their entire bureaucracy, about the depth of cooperation and alignment with another country. US President Joe Biden denied that the deal is about trying to stem China's international influence. Instead, he claimed that the deal was about maintaining stability in accordance with international rules. The US President added that, I want to see China succeed economically, but I want to see them succeed by the rules. So that's what's been happening between the US and Vietnam today. Let's move and discuss what's been happening in Morocco. The death toll from Friday night's earthquake in Morocco has surpassed 2,100 and is expected to increase as rescue work continues and the window for finding survivors narrows. The 6.8 magnitude quake hit 72 kilometres southwest of Marrakesh and has devastated mountain villages in the High Atlas. A magnitude 3.9 aftershock was recorded later on Sunday. According to the UN, more than 300,000 people have been affected by the earthquake, with many survivors forced to spend the last three nights sleeping on the streets. The army has been deployed to reinforce search and rescue efforts and distribute aid. Morocco's King Mohammed VI has also declared three days of national mourning. It was the strongest earthquake in Morocco in over 120 years, but the most deadly since 1960, when more than 12,000 people were killed by a 5.8 magnitude earthquake near the city of Agadir. 
Many countries have offered assistance. However, at the time of writing, the Moroccan government has so far only accepted aid from four countries, those being Spain, Qatar, the United Arab Emirates and the United Kingdom. Romania is currently in the midst of a national conversation about how to deal with a worsening bear situation. Over the summer, dangerous encounters between bears and humans have increased significantly, to the point that this problem may even become an election issue. The Romanian Environment Agency estimates that there were between 7,000 and 8,000 brown bears in Romania, which is well above the optimal density. As a result of this, between 2016 and 2021, there were 154 bear attacks on humans, resulting in 158 injuries and 14 deaths. While hunting the bears is controlled, Romania does still allow a predetermined hunting quota in order to keep the population under control. The leader of the relatively small Democratic Union of Hungarians party in Romania is pushing to allow more bear hunting by increasing the kill quotas in order to regulate the population. Others, though, don't believe that this is the correct approach. Liberal Romanian MEP Vlad Gahogi, a member of the opposition Save Romanian Union, said that it's an issue for the Democratic Union of Hungarians because that's where the biggest hunting associations are, and that's who they think they represent. In the UK over the weekend, a parliamentary researcher was arrested amid accusations that he spied for China. The Metropolitan Police said in a statement that a man in his 30s was arrested at an address in Oxfordshire and a man in his 20s was arrested at an address in Edinburgh. Sources have told the BBC that one of the people arrested was a parliamentary researcher involved in international affairs. Additionally, it's claimed that the individual has links to several Conservative MPs. He's denied this and China has also rejected the claim, saying that this is malicious slander. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mo Ning said, We urge the UK to stop spreading fake information. The situation has raised questions about the UK's approach to China. Some Tory MPs want to designate Beijing as a threat. As things stand though, most ministers are opposed to this. This includes Business Secretary Kemi Badenoch, who said that the UK has to be very careful with the language that we use, as defining China as a threat would escalate things. For her part, though, Home Secretary Suella Braverman supports tightening the rules on China. To end with some positive news for global representation, over the weekend the G20 made the African Union a permanent member. The African Union is made up of 55 member states with a combined population of well over a billion and is forecast to make up a quarter of the world's population by 2050. Previously, the African Union was an invited international organisation to the G20, but its elevation to permanent member means it now has the same status as the European Union, which until now was the only other regional bloc with full membership. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who chaired last week's G20 summit, said that the move will strengthen the G20 and also strengthen the voice of the global south. Now, you just spent around 8 minutes watching a video to help you learn about the world around you. And that feels good, right? Well, that's the feeling you get from spending time learning and bettering yourself. And if you want to do this more, then we have good news. Long-term supporter of the channel, Brilliant, are giving the first 200 people who sign up using our link 20% off their annual premium subscription. Brilliant is an interactive online learning platform which is full of all kinds of courses which can help you improve your career and further improve your understanding of the world. They have more than 100 courses on everything from predicting with probability to how technology works to the concept of infinity. And these may sound like topics that you need to dedicate a lot of your time to, but you really don't. You can master big concepts in as little as 15 minutes a day, and you can do this anywhere, anytime. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and thanks again to Brilliant for supporting TLDR.